Today, people with diabetes type 1 will typically be offered to wear a CGM device. And several studies show that people with type 2 diabetes can benefit from having a CGM too. So how do you know which CGM is the right one for you or for your patient if you are a healthcare professional? CGM stands for Continuous Glucose Monitor. It is a device the size of a coin stuck on the upper arm or belly. This device has a small filament which is inserted just under the skin so that it can measure interstitial glucose levels and this device typically lasts for 10 to 15 days and can fairly accurately estimate blood glucose. The CGM sends the glucose values directly to the phone or reader device via low energy Bluetooth. This enables the CGM to function for two weeks using only a tiny battery and without recharging. Currently, there are different CGMs on the market. Choosing the right model can help a person with diabetes to manage their diabetes better. And in fact, there are now lots of people without diabetes who also like to be in the know about their glucose levels. So if you are one of those people, keep watching to learn how to choose the right CGM for you. In this short video, I will tell you what to look for when choosing a CGM, starting with the most important features. The first thing to look at is whether the CGM is actually available in your country and whether it's available given your health insurance. And if you want to buy a CGM yourself, you also should figure out how much it actually costs. Not all CGMs on the market might be for sale in the country where you live, so it is important to figure out that as well. The next thing to check for is whether your CGM is compatible with the technology that you use, such as an insulin pen, an insulin pump, or whether it's compatible with your smartwatch if you want to use that. There is so much different technology that I cannot list all the different possible combinations of CGMs and the other technology. But here's my main tip. First, think about which devices you want your CGM to be able to connect to or connect to through your phone. And then call the CGM company and ask them if that's actually possible. Far less hardware is supported than you might hope for. By doing your homework first, you can prevent being disappointed. Also important to check is how long the CGM will last for. Some CGMs last only for a week, some for 10 days, some for 15 days, and the Eversense sensor even lasts for six months. The next most important aspect of the CGM is its accuracy. That is, how precise is the CGM glucose measurement compared to the true blood glucose values? For most CGMs, the so-called MART value is available. The lower the MART value, the better. Currently, the top CGMs on the market have a MART around 8%, so look for that value. Currently, Dexcom claims that its G7 uh, model is the most accurate CGM on the market with a MART of 8.2%. Similarly, competitor Abbott says on its website that they produce the most accurate 14-day CGM, which is important given that the Dexcom GGMs uh, last only for 10 days. Abbott reports that their Freestyle Libre 3 has a MART value of 7.9% and there is an Abbott-funded study that even shows a MART value of 7.8%. It's fair to say that the Libre 3 and Dexcom G7 are two of the most accurate CGMs on the market, but there are other sensors not far off. For example, the Chinese Sibionics CGM reports a MART of 8.8%. In the United Kingdom, the Freestyle Libre 2 is probably currently the most used sensor and its MART was 9.2%, according to Abbott's website. The Dexcom 1 is also widely used in Europe and is physically identical to the Dexcom G6, which has a MART of 9.0%, according to Dexcom. Now, it's also worth to look 
at independent studies, that is studies not directly funded by the CGM manufacturers. I don't think there's anything wrong with the studies uh, funded by the CGM manufacturers. It's just nice to know that there are other studies as well, because sometimes people use different participants, different, slightly different uh, blood glucose tests and so on. For example, there is an independent Danish study in which patients were tested at home and in that study the Libra 2 had an average MART of 16.3 and they found a MART of 10.2% for the Dexcom G6 and 11.9% for the Medtronic Guardian 4. They concluded that the Dexcom G6 uh, is more accurate than the Libra 2 when used at home. And uh, the 16.3% MAR that they found for the Libra 2 was not far off another independent study that reported a 17.7% MAR for the Libra 2. Now, these different studies will have used different methodologies, as I said, different types of participants and different blood glucose tests. The point is, I think, that you probably should not think that a difference of a few MAR points really makes a big difference when deciding for a CGM. And another point is that if you find the accuracy of your CGM disappointing for some reason, if it's, it's then worth discussing with your healthcare team and ask them if you could maybe try another model. The good thing is that there is now an increasing choice on the market of CGMs. The next thing to look for is the sensor size. All sensors are relatively small, but Libra 3 is clearly the winner in terms of size. And of course, there's the Eversense sensor, which must be inserted under the skin by a healthcare uh, professional. But with the Eversense, you still need to put a transmitter on top of it with a special adhesive patch on top of your arm. So you need to take that into consideration as well when considering its overall size. A key feature of a good CGM is the ability to configure alarms. Some people switch alarms off altogether if they cannot customize the volume or sound type. I think this is a major disadvantage of the Libra 3 for Android phones, where sounds cannot be customized. I made a whole video about this, so watch this if you're interested. So the option there that you have is you either have these very loud sounds or you can switch it off. The Libra 2, though, has customizable alarms, and, and that's actually quite interesting. So think about that. The Dexcom G7 has a large number of alarm configuration options, which makes this the winner in this regard. For example, you can have sounds for quick drops and for quick rises, as well as for predictive lows. The G7 app has so many options that you could make a whole video about this. And I think the G7 is great because of that. If you're concerned about sound levels during the night and so on, the G7 is definitely the best choice for you or for your patient. Probably the last thing to look for when deciding where, which sensor to get is how easily they can be applied to your arm. All available sensors, I would say, are fairly easy to insert, but the Dexcom G6 and Dexcom 1 have more steps of insertion and application than the Libra 3, the G7, or the Cbionics. That is, because the Dexcom G6 and Dexcom 1 have a sensor that needs to be inserted first, and then on top of that, you need to put the, um, the transmitter. Related to the ease of application, is the so-called warm-up time. For the G7, it's only 30 minutes. For the Freestyle Libra sensors, it's one hour. For the Dexcom G6 and the Dexcom 1, it's two hours. Based on personal experience, I think actually that the Libra 3 is easiest to insert, although the, Libra, although, uh, the Dexcom G7 is probably very similar. I think waiting for one hour uh, in terms of warm-up time is manageable, but the two hours seem to me quite a long time. So think about whether you're someone who has the patience for waiting two hours, for example. Now, finally, I hope this helped you to decide for a sensor. 
If you want to see the data for yourself, please know that I have put links below the video so that you can check things for yourself. I like to take the academic approach, that is, I like to cite the sources. This way you can share this video with your healthcare team if you would like a different CGM. And you can say, well, look, there it says this and this and this. That's why I want to be considered for a different CGM, if that's an option for you. Please share your thoughts about this video and about these insights with the community in the comments below so that other people can benefit as well. If you like videos like this, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. And I hope to see you soon for another video. Bye bye for now.